Welcome to Politics and Why with Sky Behind the Curtain. We are with Council Member Carlina Rivera. She was just reelected to City Council District 2 in Manhattan. So welcome to the show, Carlina. Thank you so much for having me. Good to see you a few weeks ago in Puerto Rico at this point. It feels like a few weeks ago. I know it took a while to, to, you know, get back my strength after all the networking and running around, but it was really fun to meet you and to meet your husband too. Yeah. Yeah. He has been so supportive. Like, you know, even before I got into politics and ran for office the first time. So uh, we met on the community board, which is not where, you know, you go usually to find romance. But um, with all the discussion and conversation on issues affecting our community, we found that, you know, we had a lot in common. So I thought, come to Puerto Rico, which he's been before to visit my family. Uh, but this was a little bit different. And you saw it was a little bit uh, um, chaotic, I guess. But there were a lot of people to meet and a lot of events. And I think he had fun. Yeah, it seemed like it, too. It was great to talk to him. And it's so cute that you met on the community board. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Some people do find it cute. I find it a little nerdy, but I think, you know, he knows uh, how much serving the you know community that raised me means to me. And so as I remember when I first ran for office, he was out there collecting signatures and knocking on doors. And then this re-election that just happened, he was doing the same thing. He was out there collecting signatures and, and reaching out to voters and I think the, you know, getting reelected clearly feels amazing. It's, it's such a, a wonderful, um, you know, thing to do. It's such a privilege and an honor to be a councilwoman. And with the new council that's coming in, you know, they're going to be, there are 51 members citywide for those who don't know across the five boroughs, but we have a large incoming class of individuals who have never served before. Some do have government experience and we actually have a at least one member who's returning. Um, but it is going to be really interesting to see this new energy come in and kind of shake up the city council. And, you know, I've met pretty much all of them. I know many of them have issues that they want to tackle right away, housing, infrastructure, a public health crisis, uh, but also making sure that the council uh, supports them so they can feel ready to deliver for their own districts. Is there any sort of mentoring program that happens within the city council, like almost like in a sorority or fraternity where you're matched with a big brother or big sister? Like, how does that work to onboard so many freshman members? Actually, that happened when I was on the community board. I think it's a good idea. You know, they paired me with someone who had been on the board for quite some time to kind of show me the ropes. So that's one of the things I think we, we should do as a council. I think there has to be ongoing professional development as well. I remember when I first came in, we got a kind of like a two day training. I think that probably has to be extended. We have to do, you know, whatever it is that they do for pretty much like our congressional members. And that has to be um, really, really intentional and very comprehensive because then we also have to run again in 18 months, more or less. Yeah, no, it's a crazy process. So who would decide if some sort of training could take place? Well, I would say that's really dependent on the speaker's office and, and kind of the curriculum that they develop. I know that you hear from the land use division and the legislative division, uh, you hear from human resources, and you, you really get to know kind of key leaders within the council and understanding you know, how the budget gets passed, so all that has to be kind of set up and coordinated in, in this very neutral, welcoming, accommodating space. So I think pretty much the speaker's office will take the take the lead on that. Well, speaking of the speaker's office, you are one of the names out there that could be the next city council speaker. And like you said, with so many incoming women, I know a lot of council members have come forward and pledged to support a woman for speaker. So, so what would that look like with a Carlina Rivera in the speaker seat? Well, you know, I'm my own person, I have my own style. Uh, and so I certainly want it to be a space where people feel like they're being heard. You know, every district gets a council member. I get to be a champion for all five boroughs. And I also know that these individuals know their districts in and out. So I wanna create a space where it feels very much 
you know, like a, like a round table where we can bounce ideas off of each other, but also making sure that they feel supported and protected. I mean, we go through some very, very controversial issues, um, whether it's legislation or land use. And so making sure that we have a, a laser sharp focus on leading a just recovery out of COVID. And so I want people to understand that uh, we know that some communities are really, really suffering. So we have the ability through all of our powers, whether it's through passing a, a really fair and equitable budget um, and really serving our constituents where there are a lot of high needs in my district. I probably, I serve thousands of constituents every year, making sure that all of those resources are there so they can feel like there's a seamless a transition as possible with all the things that are gonna come at us and a brand new mayor. Yeah. And, and what would that relationship look like? Like, is there any example of something maybe that Corey Johnson did in his capacity as speaker that that could translate into something you would do, like an example of something that might have come up, how you would change it or address it differently in, in your you know own flair? I think one thing he did that was really smart was really add staffing to the central staff when it comes to oversight and investigation. That's one of our charter mandated responsibilities. And so that's how we hold our agencies accountable. And so making sure that we have the legal and the technical expertise to provide that oversight in a real way where the public can kind of digest the information, but also understand that some of those investigations could lead to transformative change. So I think that that was something he did that was really smart and that I would love to continue. And then, you know, making sure that we're also responding to kind of the needs of the members. And so uh, we all have concerns on as how we serve our constituents in a way that's really thoughtful and intentional and intersectional. Um, so I'm really looking forward to working with all of them. Like I said, they're, they're very uh, energetic. They're innovators and change makers and people who are primary caretakers and yes, overwhelmingly, they're women, which when I got into the council four years ago, there was there was 11 women, 11. Wow. And now we're up to Wonderful. 31. Yep. It's really amazing. We look forward to big things and good things. And I know that the speaker decision is sort of made behind the scenes and the public may not realize it's not something that the public votes on. It's an internal vote within the council and a decision that's made behind the scenes. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, really within the body. It's the first vote that we take as a body. So as soon as we come in January, we'll have a charter meeting and we'll make the decision who is going to be what a lot of people still call the president of the city council. <laughs> well, we'll wait and see what happens. Council member Carlina Rivera, if you end up being speaker and we still look forward to good things from you in your office. So thanks for taking part in Politics and Why with Sky Behind the Curtain. Thanks, Guy. Always a pleasure.